ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا اللهم فلك الحمد حقا حقا ولك الحمد تعبدا ورقا وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد all praise due to allah and his praise and blessings and peace be upon our prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his family, his companions, and his followers until the Day of Judgment. I bear witness that Allah is the only one worthy of worship and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is last and final messenger. My dear brothers and sisters, about 10 years ago, around this same time of this month, maybe a couple of months earlier, at Nassau Road 1, my wife was visiting our pediatrician because my son was not feeling well. And I remember I was just landed from one of my classes in Houston Airport. And she called me, and, or the doctor actually talked to me, which is kind of strange. And he told me, I want you to come straight to the clinic because uh, I don't want your wife to drive your son. I was like, what's happening? And he said that, I'm sorry to tell you, that your son is diagnosed with leukemia. I wish I, did, I, need, I wish I don't have to tell you that news, but that's what it is. The good news is, if anybody has to have a leukemia, let it be ALL, which is something, at least, something can be, you know, there is a higher percentage of survival. 10 years later, I can look back at that day and how I felt at that moment how it was so hard, and by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the support that I got from so many great families here in, in, in our community, I was able to move on, and I can look at this moment in my life and my family's life as a turning point that have changed so many of us to be better in many different ways and improved our life in many different ways our ways as well. As you might know, October is the month of the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And as a father of a surviving child who diagnosed with cancer, alhamdulillah, and also as a son of a mother who died to a cancer, and few days ago, the man who I consider my father after my father, have done so much to me, passed away due to a long battle with lung cancer. So I thought maybe this will be a good opportunity, at least in the beginning of my khutbah today, as a person who I don't think I'm in, in a strange incident. I'm 100% sure that every single one in this masjid, now today, listening to me, have someone either personally or someone from his relatives, close or distant, had to deal with this disease, which is cancer is over a hundred types, and any part of your body can be affected by cancer. Cancer is basically um, responsible for so many deaths in the world. As a matter of fact, Child or children's reason number two, or the highest percentage of death among children, the second highest reason for death among children is cancer. First one is accident. Among adults, it's also responsible for the highest numbers of death, the second highest number of death among adults, cancer. Comes right after heart disease. So that's something interesting, is to see, or to be a, something that you should be aware of. In 2012, there were approximately 13.7 million Americans with a history of cancer alive. Anyone can develop cancer. However, the risk of getting a cancer increase in the age most cases occur in the middle age. You know, they say 
and adult, middle age adults or older. About 77% of all cancers are diagnosed in people in the age of 55 years and older. In 2000, I believe, 13, they were uh, basically almost 1,600 people die daily due to cancer. Daily. Cancer, you know, as I said, like nearly one in every four deaths in America caused by, by cancer. And excluding skin cancer, breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among women. And October is the month where we're creating awareness about, or there's an awareness month for breast cancer. And that's why, alhamdulillah, I'm happy to announce that Clear Light community invites everyone, make sure on your way out, to check it out. To, we will have participating in a run for cancer as a group, are presenting our community, and we did this before in the past, and we will do it again. As I said, like 1% of all new cancer diagnosed in America goes to children. Um, to put it in more perspective, they said, uh, for when it comes to children, it is uh, commonly between the age of 1 to 14. You know, 28% um, of them might be diagnosed with cancer. That's a very high number. And the most common cancer among men will be according to the number, prostate, lung, and colon cancer. For women, will be breast, lung, and again, colon cancer, which is a very common among men and women, and it's one of the leading uh, cause of death due to cancer disease, is the colon cancer between men and women combined. The good news is about this, I'm not here to depress you, especially if you're going through this or you have a family member going through that. The good news about this, that the rate of death due to cancer is dropping tremendously over the years, which is something we are very grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, then to those men and women who dedicated their life to research, to treat everyone in the medical field, somehow contribute to reduce the pain or healing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used them to heal the sick one. We are in debt to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them tremendously. So, uh, as I said, like for example, lung cancer's death rate declined 48% from 1990 to 2016. That's huge among men, and 23% from 2000 to 2016 among women. And the difference between men and women due to a culture thing, because they say women usually start smoking in a later age, and they are slower in quitting, while men start cancer in an earlier age, and they quit earlier in age. That's why the percentage is very big. See how big it is, from 48 to 20 from 48 to 23 percent. Breast cancer death rates declined 40 percent from 1989 to 2016 among women. The, uh, uh, and the progress is attributed to improvement in early detection. Prostate cancer death rate declined 51 percent from 1993 to 2016 among men. Colon cancer rate declined 53 percent from 1972 to uh, 2000, uh, uh, six, uh, uh, from 51% from 1993 to 2016 among men. So as you see, this declining is because improvement in treatment and early detections. And also prevention. Prevention can be an amazing uh, a tool to help yourself to help your family members. Tobacco use is the single largest preventable cause for cancer in the world. 
It costs 22% of causing of cancer's death, 22% of it due to smoking. So if you try to, to make sure that you, your friend, your family, you know what, that's it. I don't know when you're going to quit. If you seeing people around you left and right, and as we start getting rid of cigarettes, Jewel comes to the picture. And electronic cigarettes coming to the picture. And we've been hearing how many cases now in Texas died due to that as well. So argila is even worse than smoking. And I hope I'm going to call Sheikh Kamal out one of his khutbah to speak about that. Because that's a lot of people think argila is, uh, or hookah, whatever you call it, is lesser you know, uh, problem than smoking. And the reality is not. And, and uh, uh, there is many research to show and reasons for it to be even worse than cigarettes. So prevention play a major role. There is over two million skin cancers are diagnosed every year in America. They said with a prevention like not too much exposure to sun, living in Texas, you know, maybe hijab works. Uh, you know, not to too much exposure or uh, indoor tanning, you know, will help to reduce the amount of uh, people who diagnose with that. So my point is that there is a good news or in regard to preventions, in regard to treatments, in regard to, you know, early detection. So take care of yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this body and order us to take care of it. But what I want to focus on the rest of my khutbah after those introductions um, is cancer or disease is one thing that we might struggle with in life. But each and every one, they ha we have our set of struggles, our issues. My struggle maybe is with my daughter or my son who's giving me a hard time. My struggle is my finance is terrible. I'm broke. My struggle could be, you know, a habit that I'm not able to quit. A sin that I keep repeating. My struggle, it might be a health issue. So people have a different set of struggles and I don't think it's one or two or three. There's so many of things that we all struggle with. And I always remember the story of this Wise man, when people start talking about their problems, he said, everybody write his problem, put it in this container. Then after everybody wrote their problems and put it in the container, he said, everybody pick one now, randomly. So everybody pick somebody else's problem. And when they start looking at the list of the problem everybody have, they said, you know what, no, 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 give me my problems back. You know, you can deal with yours. I, I, I'm, I'm happy with, you know, with dealing with my problems. Maybe my, my husband is much better than your problem, you know. So, or my in-law, whatever is the issue is, you know, that you're struggling with. So here we, I'm saying that I want to also give tips that it will help us a lot when it comes to dealing with problems, regardless what this problem is. Because we will never live a life free of problems. We'll never live a life that is everything going absolutely smooth, 100%. There will be always challenges. There will be always you know, Roblox, there was always hardship. This life would never be free from problems. What is so important is, not what happened to us in life, but how we deal with what happened to us in life. And instead of just talking about your problem, I hope that this khutbah will inspire us to start talking to our problems, facing it, taking some serious steps to make change before you run out of time. Or you run out of even interest to solve the problem. Because sometimes you get excited about something, and you just ignore it. You don't care for it. And guess what? You never get excited about it again. That's why you should take advantage of this, you know, interest that you have. 
enthusiasm that you have in towards solving your problems, especially these long-term problems. One of the things that I will advise in regard to this, number one, don't ever be led by your problems. Don't ever let your problems lead your life. Control your thoughts. Don't let it, you know, occupy your heart. It might come through your mind, you think about it, but don't allow it to settle there. Don't allow it to be the, the first thing to think about in the morning. Make sure when you wake up in the morning, you think about the most positive things. And the Nabi Sallallahu taught us that إِذَا أَصْبَحَ الرَّجُلُ إِذَا أَصْبَحَ الْإِنسَانُ وَالْآخِرَةُ أَكْبَرُ هَمِّهِ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ when you wake up in the morning and the most, the first thing you think about and you concern about is the akhirah. Talk about Jannah and how you will be there. And you think about it in a very positive way. Allah will fill your heart with satisfaction. Make sure that in the morning when you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't talk about, you know what? My love handle is going out of hand. <laughs> you know? You know, I'm just gaining weight. I'm just getting sick. I look terrible. I'm this, I'm that. You know, oh my God, the kid's not. Oh, I have a long, hard day in front of me. No. Say it's going to be a great day. Ya Rabbi Allahumma lak alhamd. I thank you for all. Think of the blessings of Allah. Be grateful and thankful the first thing you wake up in the morning. And see how your day will go. Ibn al-Qayyim lahu karima jameela. Yaqool, inna awwal al-nahar ka khitam al-dabba. إِذَا أَمْسَكْتَهُ أَمْسَكْتَ بِبَقِيَّةِ الدَّابَ يَقُولُ ibn al-Qayyim rahimah Allah said something very, it's a metaphor. He said, the beginning of the day is like, you know, when you hold basically the horse from the, the robe or the saddle. You hold it so you control it. You control the animals, the leash. You hold the leash, you control the animal. He said, that's exactly the morning. If your morning is positive, good, that's the leash. You control the rest of your day. What can be better than وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُودًا What can be better in praying Fajr on time? And starting your day with Al-Fatiha, with reading Qur'an, with praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't let problems lead your life by constantly think about it. Also, لا تجعل حياتك كلها تدور كردة فعل للمشاكل التي تقع بك. Also another manifestation for this, don't make your life is all about reaction to the problems that are happening to you. So what happened? All my life is about how to deal with this problem, how to, to react to it. I never get a chance actually to talk about my dreams, about the thing that I want to do, about the thing that I want to enjoy in life. Because I always focus on the problem and the what I don't have and the negative part. You know, so this is so important is always to, to not to exaggerate the problems, not to think too much about it. You should do, take the necessary steps and you leave the rest for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because sometimes our problems seem larger than their reality. Just exactly like the shadows. Look so big than what is really it represents. Another important point when it comes to these challenges in life, don't ever let your problems defeat you from inside. Even if you are knocked out from outside, don't allow it to knock you down from inside. See, Sahaba radiallahu anhum ardahum, when they were defeated in the battle of Uhud, when so many of them killed, and the people of Quraysh felt this is the victory, we are, you know, now we are equal, blah, blah, blah. And the Sahaba were so, you know, it's so hard for them to lose the battle. While Muhammad وسلم, among them, to see the Prophet's uncle killed, and people tortured, and disfigured, and, and all those things that you know of took place in the battle of Uhud. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in regard to this particular incident. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah told the believer, don't ever feel down. Less. If you're a true believer. Don't ever let this problem defeat you from inside. That's why the izzat al-mu'min, something nobody can take it away from you. That dignity, that strength, 
That iman, faith in your heart, nobody can take it away. The only way it goes away, if you kick it out yourself. The only time you will be defeated from inside, if you allowed it. No disease, no disability, no problems, no one control your heart except Allah and yourself. You the one who control what's inside you, how you think. It is not because things are difficult that we don't dare. No, it's because we don't dare things are difficult. That's the reality. I'm terrified from height. I'm terrified from height. I always think height, I, I, it's very you know, intimidating for me to be in a high place. But you know what? I said I'm going to conquer my fear. It's not because it's difficult. It's because I don't dare. I remember that quote. And I did something that has to do with height, you know, which is I never thought in my life I'll do it. But you know what? I felt I never, I just did it because I want to make sure that I was able to conquer my fear. Because they said the best way to conquer your fear is through actions. And this is just in a, in a, in a silly example. But there is bigger things in your life. Maybe you're afraid to take certain steps. Maybe to start a business. Maybe to start a new life. Maybe to make a decision to end this relationship. Maybe it's about time to depart from one another. Uh, my partner or my, my you know, uh, uh, whatever is the case. You're suffering from it. You know, it's a time for me to confront this issue. And that's what takes for you to, to basically to be strong to make that decision. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مثل المؤمن كمثل النخلة. The example of the believer is like the palm tree. Palm tree is an amazing tree. Palm tree can be, basically the, the wind can bend the palm tree all the way down, then it comes back again, bounce back again. There is no tree, only like big trees, they don't. If the wind basically bend it, it means break the tree. And nakhla hiya tanzil thumma tarja. أَمَّا الْأَشْتَارَ الْأُخْرَى تُكْسَى وَهَكَذَا الْمُؤْمِنِ المؤمن when there is a pressure on them, yes, it's hard and may bend you, but you bounce back. تَرْجِعْ كَمَا كُنْتُ أَفْضَلْ تَعُودْ بَاسِقَةً that's, that's an interesting example, one of the benefits why the Prophet ﷺ said, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ كَمَثَلِ النَّخْلَى The example of the believer, like the example of a palm tree. And by the way, palm tree, the older it gets, the sweeter the dates are. So please check yourself. Now as you grow older, do your kids and your wife see you sweeter? Or all the time, borderline grumpy old man? That's, that's something you should check. But because the believer, the older he gets, it's like the palm tree. The older the palm tree gets, the sweeter the, the fruit is. Palm tree, you can use everything in it. Very beneficial. And it have very low maintenance. So this is another thing that we should be very careful about when we deal with the problems. Another point that I want to share as well is when you have a problem in life, make sure that you don't just focus on the symptoms. You have to go to the root cause of this problem. You know, so many times we just want to put a lid in our problem. So many, prob so many times we think if we don't look at it, if we don't talk about it, it will go away by itself. Maybe there are certain things by time it will go away. But most of the real problems and real issues, you have to deal with it. You have to look at the root cause for it. Like sometimes couples come to me and there is a problem. I said, there is something way deeper than what you guys are talking about. It's not about going to this vacations or spending this money this way. There is a bigger issue, a trust issue, a respect issue that needs to be dealt with. You know, it's not about the sin that you do. Maybe there is a deeper issue that you don't have a strong iman inside you. That you need to work on it. So here we say it is so important that we, you know, we always try to look at these problems and look at the cause root for it and how can we deal with it. And we try 
You know, if the plan doesn't work, it doesn't mean you change the goal. You just change the plan. You, you try another way of solving the problem. Because I will guarantee you one thing, guys. And I hope you all agree with me. If you take 45 south, you're going to end up in Galveston. You are never going to end up in Woodlands. That's right. If every day you take 45 south, you're never going to end up in Woodlands. You're going to keep going until you reach Galveston. So if you deal with the problem the same way, you're going to have the same results. So many times, خلاص آخر مرة أرجع بس البعض, you know, مشاكل عائلية طب مو حيرجع البعض وترجع نفس المشكلة. All of what they do, let's just go back to each other, you know, خلاص forget about it, and when they go back to each other, husband and wife after separation or a child and father, you know what? You take 45 south, you're gonna end up in Galveston. Good luck if you want to live there. You're gonna save the same problem. You have to deal with it again. So this is very important thing to think about. You know what? I can't just do the same exact thing that I've been doing every time and expecting a different results. That's something wrong in, in, in your in your way of thinking. That's kids do that, but not adults, not wise people. Anyway, I, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know ayyakum. وأن يخفف عنا جميعا يرحمنا جميعا برحمته أقول ما سمعتم واستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد They say language is the dress of thoughts the dress of thoughts Watch your words how you talk about your problems Don't use big words because the way you talk about it that's how you affect you and I love what the Prophet ﷺ told us. You know what? You can't say something good. Remain silent. You, you make sure Allah bi'ina alayha inshallah al mushkila. Inshallah mahlula. Bi idni Allah an Allah yassir. Ya Rabbi yassir. Allah subhanahu wa taala will make it easy. You know, watch your words. Always use positive words. Don't use negative words. And, and see how this will affect you. And instead of saying, it can't be happened, I'll try. You know, always try to, to make sure that this is something you, th you always think about your words. That's why we have باب الألفاظ في الشرع باب عظيم جدا. يعني يحتاج إلى درس وخطبة في ذاته. The, the, the wording, the concept of what words that you use is a very interesting concept in Islam. And yani even the Tawheed talk about this. For example, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يقول أحدكم لو أني فعلت كذا وكذا لكان حصل كذا وكذا فإن لو تفتح باب الشيطان بالوسوسة والتمكن في في قلبك. He said, don't say if I did this and this would have not happened this way or some something else maybe might have. He said, why? Because if you keep saying if, you what? You open the door for the shaitan, and when the shaitan enter your heart, will make you feel miserable, terrible about yourself. The issue is not to feel bad about yourself. The issue is what can you do good to make things better. So every time you talk about F, F in the past, it's not going to really solve much. Finally, I want to say, make sure that you make a lot of dua. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you to overcome your problem. Be optimistic. You always look at the light, always expect the faraj, the relief from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, with this optimism, it makes you real. It's not an, an idealistic thing, it's not delusion. No, optimism is really to see opportunities when people see it as just a difficulty in your life. And finally, make sure that you consult if you have a problem. Don't complain, but ask for advice. Ask for help. You will find a lot of resources. And I can say this when I have my problem many times in my, many of my problems. I will always like to go to people and ask and consult and listen to them. So you know what? I think today is a good day that you go get your problem solved. You take control over your life instead of letting this negativity taking over your life. To get the life that you deserve, 
Don't let anything stopping you from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you for. He created you to be happy, to be free, to be strong, to be connected to him. And anything connected to him is not weak, is good. I ask you today to be able to, you know, enjoy what the gifts and the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you. And to be calm and wise and fill your heart with faith when you look at your problems and when you deal with them. أسأل الله أن يجعل القرآن ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء أهمام همومنا وأحزاننا وأن يوفقنا وإياكم لكل خير وأن يعيننا وإياكم على كل مصيبة وأن يرفع عنا وعنكم وأن يشفى مرضانا ومرضاكم وأن يرحم موتانا وموتاكم اللهم إن نسألك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أن تغفر لنا وترحمنا وأن تعفو عنا وأن تكرمنا وأن تحسن ختامنا يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم على نبينا محمد وقوموا للصلاة يرحمكم الله